So we're looking at the vector product here, otherwise called the cross product. We're going to take two vectors and multiply them together. Now you might think, I've done that before, the dot product, but no. When you find the dot product of A dot B, you get a number. But when you find the vector product, vector A times vector B, you get a vector. That's why it's called the vector product. So we're not doing the dot product in this video, we're doing the vector product. So if I have two vectors, A and B, what does the resulting vector look like? It's a little bit hard to visualize because we've got to work in three-dimensional space, but A times B, which we can represent as these two vectors here, A and B, so now I have my two vectors here, and it doesn't matter what orientation in three-dimensional space those two vectors are, the resulting vector will be perpendicular to both. In other words, if that's A and that's B, this one is going to be C. A bit hard to see there. All right, so you can see that this is perpendicular to that and to that. It makes a right angle with that one, and it makes a right angle with that one. So that's what our vector product outputs. You need to imagine that this is in three dimensions. So my resulting vector of A times B is a vector that shoots up there. Okay, so we're in three dimensions. There's a right angle between that and that. There's a right angle between that and that. And it's shooting straight up like that. Now, this is going to confuse you a little bit. There is another vector that goes down here. Now, that's also creating a right angle between that one in A and that one in B. And this vector here has the same length as this vector here. And that vector is B times a. That's really weird, right? A times B, B times A, you would expect that A times B and B times A are the same. But under vectors, multiplication, vector product, is not commutative. Not commutative. But there are some similarities here. The length of B times A is the same as the length of A times B. They also form right angles with A and B, whether you're going up, up or down. Uh, but you need to be able to figure out, well, is A times B going to go in that direction or is A times B going to go in that direction? And to do that, we use a screw. Now, this is called a right-hand screw, and it's what 99% of screws in the world are. What it means is that if you turn it that way, if you turn it clockwise, if you turn it that way, the screw will go into the wood. Okay? And if you screw it um, that way, that is anti-clockwise, it will come out of the wood. Okay, so screwing it in tight, loosening it up. We can use these arrows here to do the same thing. If we're going from A to B, if we're doing A times B, we're moving in this direction, which means that the screw is going to come out of the wood, out of the, out of the plane. If we're doing B times A, which is this arrow here, then that means we're screwing this way into the wood, down, and so then we're going down. So you just need to ask yourself, am I doing A times B? Am I screwing this way, anti-clockwise? In which case, I'm going out of the wood. Or am I screwing this way, B times A, in which case I'm going down the wood? Now, there is this trick that you can use with your right hand, and I'm a little bit concerned about how it's going to work because I'll let you in on a secret. This is mirror image. This is my right hand. Okay, so the way that the trick works, I don't know how well this is going to come off in this video, is you point your right hand fingers in the direction of A, and then you curl towards B. All right? The direction your thumb is facing in is the direction your A times B is going to come out. Now, if I try to multiply B by A, this time I point my fingers in front into B, so the direction of B, and then I try to curl my fingers to A. But, wait a minute, my fingers don't curl that way. So, turn your hand over, and now my fingers are still pointing to B, I curl it that way, and now my thumb is facing in that direction, and then I'm going downwards. So. Think of a right-hand screw, use the right-hand rule if you want. Um, they result in the same ideas, 
but make sure that you're getting these consistently correct however you think about it. So what about the magnitude? We know all about the direction now. What about the magnitude? What will that be? Well, it's pretty straightforward. The magnitude of A times B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B sine theta. Now you can see that this calculation isn't going to change whether it's A times B or B times A because we're dealing with magnitudes here and an angle between. Angle between. And none of those things change. Now this is really cool and it's really cool for a slightly different reason than all of these pictures we've been drawing so far. If you have a vector A and another vector B and you draw a line parallel to B and another line here parallel to A, so what we have is a parallelogram, the area of that parallelogram is going to be equal to the magnitude of A times B. In other words, the area of that parallelogram is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the angle between them. Now, I want to prove that to you, but I think it's something that you can prove for yourself. You just need to know some basic trigonometry. So go ahead and prove that this times this, or this vector product this, is equal to the area of the parallelogram. So it's at this point you still don't know how to calculate the vector product, and that's something we need to do. So what do you know? Well, you know that the vector product results in a vector. You know that it results in a vector that is perpendicular to two vectors that you've got. You also know that it, the length of the vector that you get is going to be equal to the area of the parallelogram described by the two vectors. You just don't know how to do it. So, let's do it. Before we do, let's look at some really simple examples. The i times i vector, so i, just one length one, times i. Well, if I did that, it'd be 1 times 1 times sine the angle between them. The angle between them is 0, so 1 times 1 times 0 is 0. So i times i doesn't result in a vector at all. What about i times j? What would happen there? Well, i is my x, j is my y, and thinking about my screw, if I multiply i by j, I'm screwing from i to j in that direction, which is out of the page. And it's going to be k because k is parallel, oh sorry, perpendicular to i and j. But what about j times i? Well, j times i is moving from the y to the x. So now I'm rotating this way. Now it's going to be negative k because it's moving down the page here. Now I can create similar ones for um, the j components and the k components here. j times j equals 0, k times k equals 0 j times k equals i out of the page, k times j equals negative i into the page, and finally k times i is j and i times k equals negative j. You're only really going to be able to understand all that if you build like a three-dimensional structure and then rotate each one to see that they're resulting in positive and negative values in and out of the page, in and out, left to right, whatever it might be. But that is the basic idea here. So what does that mean for calculating two vectors? Well, here's two vectors here. Now, if I want to do the vector product, it's going to look like this. This vector times this vector. Now, vector uh, products are distributive, which means I can do this times this, this times this, this times this, this times this. this. Boop, boop, boop. I'll, I'll end up with nine values altogether. So if we do a couple of these in turn, I'll get 3i times i. Well, i times i, or i vector product i, gives me zero, so that's no good. What about 3i times negative 3j? Well, let's look at i times j. i times j gives a k value. i times j gives a k value. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, so I'm going to get negative 9k. Whoa, already confusing. All right, 3i times 2k, let's look here. Uh, i times k gives me a negative j, so I'm going to get a negative 6j. And I can move on and do the j, the j times i, the j times j, the j times k, etc, 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 and I can get a full answer here. There is a shortcut that's way easier. Amazingly, a times b is equal to the determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix created in the following way i, j, k, 3, 3, 8, oops, 3, 3, 8, 1, negative 3, 2. 
So ijk, first vector, second vector, and then we find the determinant of that. Now, how do we find the determinant of that? It's i, the determinant of this vector here, 3, 8, negative 3, 2. So in other words, you look at your i, you ignore that um, column there, and you do the determinant of that. Then you look at your j, you ignore the j, and you find the determinant of that. And we're going to subtract that. And then you take your k and add the determinant of that. 3, 3, 1, negative 3. Okay, once you know the determinant of that, that, and that, we will have our vector product. That is our vector product using this determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So, what does this mean? If you have a matrix, 3i, oh, sorry, if you have a vector, 3i plus 3j plus 8k, so positive in all directions, but really far upwards. And then you have another vector, i minus 3j plus 2k. So up on the x-axis, back on the y-axis, and up just a little bit. Uh, and you multiply a by b, you're going to get this vector here. Um, it's going out a lot along the x-axis, just a little bit on the y-axis, and down negative 12k. So the three vectors, boom, boom, and then there's our result perpendicular to both and having those coordinates. I was just about to wrap it up, but I just wanted to make sure that you saw that it is possible. You can just do it by expanding that, making sure that you understand where the positives and negatives are, and you get the same solution here. This is just a smarter way to do it. It's a nice, neat little algorithm that'll get you there. That is the vector product.